Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about projectile motion but with components. So unlike my previous example where I just had something falling off a cliff, I am now going to have an example of an explosion happening here, so something being fired and it falling. So this is more of a traditional parabola. And that word's important. The rules still apply, like with all projectile motion, the time spent in the x-axis is exactly the same time as you spend in the y-axis. Okay. So this here is an object, 5 metres per second this way, working at an angle of 30 degrees. And with most things, we do like taking components. So even if you see anything like this, the first thing you should do is instantly draw in some component lines. So this here would be the velocity, or the initial velocity, which is the letter U, in the X direction. And this would be the initial velocity in the Y direction. And that is really key and important that that is labelled. You can then, of course, calculate it. So that, remember, the real thing is the hypotenuse. So this is the hypotenuse, and that is the adjacent. So I'm going to use cos. So cos 30 equals ux over 5. So 5 cos 30 equals, grab the calculator. So 5 cos, ooh, 5 cos 30 is 4.33 meters per second. And you are welcome to use sine 30 on this one, but what I'm going to do is cheat a little bit, and I do like writing the other direction in, so I've got 60, so I will be using cos, and I know that, going on this, that 5 cos 60 equals uy, which equals 2.5 metres per second. So that's the first bit out of the way. I've seen something's at an angle, I get the components sorted instantly. And I do this with most forces. If you see something working at an angle, labeling those components is really vital. So what I want to find out is I want to find the maximum range this object goes. How far does this cannon shoot? And the thing I said before, I said it was a parabola, and that's actually really important because this means it's symmetrical. This means if I draw a line up to the halfway mark here, that when I travel to this point, it's exactly the same travel as this point. So here, this would be a half x, but there's actually something really important that happens at the top. If I throw this up and then down, there is a point where my velocity is zero because it stops moving up and then starts moving down again. So there's a point where my velocity is zero and this is right at the top here. My velocity here in the Y would be zero. And that's really important to take out. So what we do when we have parabolas like this is that we work to the halfway point. So S, U, V, A, and T, there, I've got my, there it is. Again, X and Y, and I'm gonna work only in one direction. I'm only gonna work, I'm gonna work to halfway. So in the X direction, my distance would be a half X. I don't know that value. My initial velocity, now this is where the components come in. I know my X velocity and I know my Y because I took my components earlier. So this is going to be 4.33 and this is going to be 2.5. As with all projectile motion in paper one and the first year paper, the acceleration in the x-axis is zero, which means that my end velocity will still be 4.33. Because I'm working to halfway, this velocity will be zero. Gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, is minus 9.81. This minus becomes even more important in this one. And I know my times are equal. So, let's find my time. V, U, I've got V, U and A, and I need T. 
So I'm going to use V equals U plus AT. And I've put Y here because I know what axis I'm working in. So I've got 0 equals 2.5 minus 9.81 T. So minus 2.5 equals minus 9.81 T. So T equals minus 2.5 divided by minus 9.81 and that equals so minus 2.5 <laughs> minus 2.5 divided by minus 9.81 and that's going to be 0 0.25 I'm now going to find my s here s equals u t plus a half I'm going to do this in the x direction, half a t squared, and my a being zero completely destroys that and wipes it out. Okay, so I've got 4.33 times by 0 0.25 plus zero, so times by 4.33 is 1.1 meters. So I know. The distance between here and the halfway point is 1.1 meters. This means my whole distance here must be 2.2 because it's double this. I know that to get from here to here took me 0 0.25 seconds which means to get from here to here is going to take me another 2.25. So my total time is 0.5 seconds. So by working to this halfway point is vital because you understand, you know a lot more information about this point here and you can work out so much information. You can then work out if you wanted the maximum height by finding the y direction. I can do that right now by using, which one I'm gonna use? I'm gonna use v squared equals u squared plus a two a s. So zero equals 2.5 squared plus two times minus 9.81 s. Making sure that looks like an s and not five. So 2.5 squared, so 6.25. Minus 2 times 9.81, 19.62s, minus 6.25 equals minus 19.62s, so minus 6.25 over minus 19.62 equals s, which equals 6.25 divided by that, 2 meters. So the maximum height of this was 0.32 metres. Don't be ashamed to draw on the diagram. Don't be ashamed to actually write all over this, this thing here. You are more than welcome to in exams. The only time you have to be careful, of course, is when they ask you to draw on the, that diagram, but they will explicitly say this. The more you can label on your diagram, the better. But with these ones, the most important part to take with these projectile motion questions is looking at this halfway point. Remembering the time is the same in the X and the Y. And that is how you do a more complicated projectile motion question.